Hey there, Foundation staff. We get is SCP real questions in the comments all the time. And so I want to lay this to rest now, and I want you guys to help me in the comments. If someone asks, is SCP real? The answer is, no, it's just an online creative writing community. This is because sometimes younger kids on the internet actually believe these things, and then go stab their friend because Slender Man told them to. And we do not want anyone to get hurt over this. I will jokingly roleplay with you in the comments, it's all in good fun, but if someone asks for real, tell them that it's not real. It's just a creative writing community. It's all for funsies. I'll do it. You do it. Please spread the word. Thank you. What does SCP actually stand for? While the first thing that comes to mind is our informal motto, Secure, Contain, Protect, in the original article of SCP-173, you will see no mention of Secure, Contain, Protect or the SCP Foundation. Both of those came later. The original SCP simply stands for Special Containment Procedures. Every entity or object we contain has their own SCP number because these are the special containment procedures for those entities. Interesting. Let's take a little look at the strange shape of the SCP Foundation fandom, both on-site and off-site. When you look at the on-site community for the English or any international branch, you're going to have four different kinds of members. Lurkers who read the stories but don't sign up. Members who read and vote. Authors who read, vote, and write stories, and the staff, volunteers who enforce rules on the site, deal with the multitudes of copyright issues our community deals with, and hold events like the seminars and contests. This is the heart of the SCP community, but the heart is only part of the body. And with an estimated 85,000 members and 1,800 authors, while the Volgan by himself has 626,000 subscribers, yeah, it's important we talk about the offsite community in part two. Part 2 of explaining the off-site and on-site parts of the SCP fandom. For the sake of a loose definition, I'm going to label you as an off-site creator if your work is digested off the wiki proper. This will mainly include SCP game developers, YouTubers, TikTokers, podcasters, as well as your garden variety fan artists and cosplayers. Some of these off-site creators are also members of the on-site community, like myself being an SCP author and junior staff member, as well as working on YouTube, TikTok, and podcasting off-site, while others are strictly off-site for one reason or another. Stuff created by off-site creators is usually considered non-canon, although it gets a little fuzzy when you realize that stuff that's on-site has no canon in the first place, so you know it's just really cloudy all around. There are also numerous off-site forums like Reddit, Twitter, and numerous privately run Discord servers. While the main site does have forums and an IRC channel, many site members will also congregate to these off-site forums for various social or usability reasons. On to part three. Part three of explaining the relationship between the on-site and off-site portions of the SCP fandom. The on-site and the off-site fandoms have very different preferences when it comes to SCP articles, and I venture to guess that that has something to do with the way they interact with the wiki. The writers and the authors, they read a lot, they write a lot, they intake a lot of SCPs, so they're gonna end up wanting something a little more dense, a little more deep. Whereas the casual viewer who's playing games and getting their info through memes and stuff like that, are gonna naturally get simpler concepts just because they're easier to memeify and gamify. For example, the off-site fandom spends a lot more time on 173, 049, 096, 682, while the writership of the wiki doesn't really care about those ones very much. Meanwhile, the writers think SCP-2747, for example, is a huge article, very deep, complicated, good lore, and the off-site fandom barely knows it exists. Continuing on to part four! Explain the off-site and on-site SCP fandoms part four. Comment if you're still with me on this. This difference in article preference between the on-site and the off-site fandoms can leave the on-site fandom seeming a little grouchy once in a while, because you can only go through 100,000 Peanut No 049 memes, while we are 4,000 articles past that already. And once in a while, some newer articles like 3008, 5000, and 5999 will make a splash in the off-site community, and that's nice. Overall, the on-site fandom is very appreciative of the way that the off-site fandom absorbs and runs with their work. The standards of the wiki are hard to reach, and if you're having fun off-site making unofficial work, you can certainly stay unofficial. Nothing wrong with fan art and casually enjoying the community after all. But it is unique how thin the line between creator and fan is in the SCP community, and if you want to make something that fits onto the canon, your opportunity is just a little hard work away. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, let's answer this comment. We tried to have 343 deal with 682, but it didn't work. 
As shown in the 682 termination logs, we introduced 343 into 682's chamber and the two of them could not perceive or touch each other. Upon being informed that 682 was in the room with it, 343 became enraged and stated, quote, he's not one of mine, deal with him yourself. Remember, the 682 termination log is on the wiki, so many of your 682 termination questions can be answered with a quick trip to the main site. Sometimes you'll see an SCP with a dash EX at the end, designating it as an explained SCP. But what does that really mean? Explained SCPs are objects or concepts that the Foundation classified as anomalous initially, but for one reason or another are no longer considered so. Why would this happen? Numerous reasons, including maybe it was an advanced technology that is now common enough to be considered normal. Maybe it was never anomalous, but scientific understanding wasn't advanced enough to understand it yet. Maybe, in the course of study, a researcher discovered they were studying something non-anomalous and decided to keep that information to themselves for various purposes. Maybe a researcher falsified an anomaly, scamming the Foundation out of resources for their personal reasons. Or maybe the Foundation failed to contain a widespread anomaly and amnesticized the public so they would believe this new normal is how it always was. Whatever the reason, it's important that the Foundation keep these documents on the mainframe so we can learn from our mistakes. Ooh, that's a very interesting question. Let's talk about that. Sometimes on the Site42 YouTube channel or in other SCP-related communities, you'll see the letters SCIP. What does that I stand for? Literally nothing. You see, in the SCP community, we say SCP a lot. And when you say it out loud, it's three syllables, SCP. So in shorthand, some people have taken to adding an I so you can pronounce it skip. Hey, get those skips. How, what skip is that? And it makes it easier for us talking. Now, some people will do it the easy way and spell it S-K-I-P, which is the real word. But when you're typing, some of us are nerds and just say S-C-I-P. For some bonus fun facts, the name of the show I use for my SCP readings, The Sherm's Great Skip Dictations, is supposed to be a pun on the novel Great Expectations. But I don't know one person who has ever gotten that without me telling them. I'm too big a nerd. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna go hang green on you guys and put this question to bed once and for all. For context, SCP-173 is the statue that moves when you're not looking at it, or if you blink, it's lightning quick, and it wants to kill you. Put your hand up like this. Now put your pinky down. Did your ring finger move, yes or no? For most of us, the ring finger moves, because the motor neurons that lead to your muscles activate only when they're trained to do certain things, and most of us haven't trained our pinky finger to move independently. Gosh darn it, stay there. In the same vein, your eyes have blinked together your entire life. You've never had a reason to blink one eye at a time. So when I blink this eye, my other eye blinks. It's just accidental. I'm trying, I'm trying, but this is blinking by accident. So yes, if you are one of the few, the proud who have trained yourself to blink one eye at a time, you're gonna survive this. But the rest of us are getting a real warm neck hug real soon. <sighs> Addendum. First on the pinky thing, yes, there are some people whose muscles are fused in a way that they will never be able to move their pinky independently from their ring finger. This is an anatomical variation that I didn't have time to bring up in a one minute video. But yes, I know about winking. The thing is, when your muscles are all fast, you're petrified, you're full of fear adrenaline, you're gonna twitch, you're gonna make a mistake. Again, cool heads, training, yes, but your odds are not strong. You're better off holding your eyes open as long as you can and then getting the heck out of there. And to sate your curiosity, I am terrible at winking. That's why I turn my head. So you can't see that I blink every time, like a dork. Hey there, Site42 fam. It's come to my attention that not a lot of people know that we have a Site42 SCP merch store. We've commissioned art from multiple artists to make SCP-related merch, and we've got stickers for the Site42 channel. And so if you want some SCP merch, as well as helping support the Site42 channel, teespring.com slash stores slash site 42. Thank you in advance and cheers.